Good afternoon. I am pleased to be here to honor eight Missouri public safety officers by presenting to them the state's highest public safety award, the Missouri Medal of Valor. It is my great honor to be here with a number of tremendous leaders in law enforcement in the state of Missouri. Now, in each of these instances, the public safety officers receiving this commendation put their own lives at extreme risk on behalf of their fellow Missourians. In fact, one of the officers we honor today is not with us because his heroic action to protect the public cost him his life. They represent an ambulance service, two fire departments, a sheriff's department, urban and suburban police departments, and the Missouri State Highway Patrol. These officers faced down desperate gunmen, one who held an elderly woman at gunpoint, another who fired his weapon in the lobby of a hotel crowded with innocent guests and party celebrants, and a third who fired indiscriminately near a crowd of people. They put themselves into a burning house to rescue trapped children. They fought against the powerful winds and flying debris of an EF-4 tornado to protect a frightened family, and they jumped into dangerous floodwaters in an attempt to save a diver from drowning. In all of these cases, the officers acted without regard to their own safety. They were instead focused solely on protecting and serving the public and in making, and in one case, the heroic deed resulted in the officer making the ultimate sacrifice. We live in a time when far too often the wrong people are celebrated, when our young people are distracted from those who should be their true role models. The words icon and hero are thrown around far too loosely. The men we honor this afternoon are heroes in the true meaning of the word. They distinguish themselves with courage, bravery, selflessness, and noble action to protect the vulnerable and those at direct risk. It is my honor to stand with them today and recognize their achievements. Gentlemen, my congratulations to each of you, and on behalf of the people of Missouri, I thank you for what you have done. Now I'd like Department of Public Safety Director Jerry Lee to come forward and read the names of each of our recipients along with the description of their actions as I present them with their medals of valor. Director Lee. Thank you, Governor. Our first two recipients are Joseph G. Heath, St. John's Ambulance Service, and Jeffrey S. Elliott, Springfield Fire Department. On January 15, 2011, fire crews and EMS were dispatched to a Springfield house fire as heavy black smoke poured out of the structure. A young woman, her face black from smoke, raced to the responders, telling them her two daughters were trapped in a bedroom. Medic Heath immediately pulled himself into the burning structure through a broken out window. Despite the fire's intense heat and thick smoke and his lack of protective clothing and breathing apparatus, Medic Heath was able to find one of the children and pass her lifeless body through the window to safety. At that time, a battalion chief ordered Medic Heath to exit the structure due to the increasing danger. Springfield Power Department Rescue Truck Number 1 had arrived on the scene and was able to make entry to the house through the back door. Rescue Specialist Elliot entered the burning house through the back porch and despite the smoke and heat, was able to conduct a search and locate a second child who was on the floor in the bedroom. Rescue Specialist Elliot cradled the lifeless child in his arms and carried her outside to awaiting medical personnel. Both girls suffered serious second and third degree burns, but they were treated immediately and their lives were spared due to the quick and heroic actions of Medic Heath and Rescue Specialist Elliot. Our next recipient is Thomas R. Bacon, Jr., Pattonville Fire Protection District. On April 22, 2011, Private Bacon and other Pattonville Station No. 1 firefighters sighted a powerful EF-4 tornado bearing down on the station. Firefighters were ordered to take cover in a storage closet inside the station. Private Bacon hesitated because he saw a powerful winds blow a small sedan onto the firehouse ramp. The tornado's debris field was already swirling several hundred yards away, an electrical substation exploded across the street. Despite these life-threatening conditions, Private Bacon left his position of safety, fighting through the increasing winds to get to the car. Private Bacon found a frightened husband, wife, and three children and directed them to the firehouse shelter area. 
Private Bacon grabbed the last of the children from the car and fighting the fierce winds and debris, got the child inside as the storm threw him into the engine bay. There, the family took cover with Pri Private Bacon and the firefighters who were already inside. Shortly after the tornado passed, the firefighters and family all emerged unhurt. Our next recipient is Daryl A. Hall, St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. On April 24, 2011, Officer Hall was off duty in a downtown St. Louis nightclub when he heard gunshots being fired outside. Officer Hall ran outside to investigate and witness a gunman firing shots into the air near a group of people. Officer Hall identified himself as a police officer and ordered the gunman to drop his weapon. The gunman then began firing at Officer Hall. Officer Hall returned fire, striking the gunman several times, killing him. Tragically, Officer Hall was also shot and killed. Although off duty and without time to call for help, Officer Hall, without hesitation, had responded bravely to protect innocent bystanders. As he had done through his five years of dedicated service with the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, <laughs> Officer Hall honorably served and protected his community. Our next recipient is James C. Cooksey, Jr., Missouri State Highway Patrol. On June 21st, 2011, Trooper Cooksey responded when a sports utility vehicle traveled off Route P and entered the, a flooded drainage ditch in New Madrid County. The SUV submerged up to the luggage rack, was rapidly being swept downstream in St. John's Bayou. Trooper Cooksey joined two other civilians in attempting to reach the driver and free her from the vehicle. The swiftly moving water was murky and submerged and floating debris posed additional hazards. <laughs> Trooper Cooksey assisted the civilians in getting the victim out of the vehicle and then swam, pulling her with him towards the bank. There, Trooper Cooksey and another trooper performed CPR until an ambulance arrived. Unfortunately, despite the heroic efforts of Trooper Cooksey and the other men in the dangerous conditions, the victim did not survive. Our next recipient is Robert C. Sissel, Sunset Hills Police Department. On October 26, 2011, Detective Sergeant Sissel and Officer Dan Thompson responded to a 911 call at a home reference of home invasion and robbery in progress. Sergeant Sissel responded to the rear of the house where he immediately identified a masked gunman holding an elderly woman hostage. Detective Sergeant Sissel alerted Officer Thompson and through the kitchen window, Officer Thompson commanded the gunman to release the victim. The gunman released the woman, but moved towards the family room. Sergeant Sissel ran into the family room through the broken out glass sliding door as he identified himself as a police officer. The gunman entered the doorway between the kitchen and the family room, aiming his pistol at Detective Sergeant Sissel at a distance of just 10 feet. Sergeant Sissel ordered him to drop the gun. When he did not, Sergeant Sissel had no alternative but to use deadly force. He fired a single shot, incapacitating the gunman, who was taken into custody. Soon after, other responding officers arrested a second gunman outside the residence. Our next recipients are Curtis B. Bohannon II of the Jefferson City Police Department and Christopher J. Sakanik of the Cole County Sheriff's Department. On December 10, 2011, a high-speed pursuit of a man suspected of murdering two people in Dent County that same day moved towards Jefferson City on Highway 5063. Officer Bohannon positioned his patrol car as the second pursuit vehicle. As the pursuit continued into Jefferson City, spike strip strips were deployed and the suspect's vehicle struck the strips. Eventually, the suspect was forced to pull over and he entered the Capitol Plaza Hotel parking lot. Officer Bohannon followed the suspect into the hotel lobby and the suspect fired on the officer. Officer Bohannon was forced to return fire. Detective Sakanik was providing security for a private party at the hotel when he heard the disturbance occurring. Detective Sakanik drew his service weapon and moved towards the sound of the gunfire. Unable to see the gunman initially, Detective Sakanik jumped a decorative wall in hotel's indoor courtyard, maneuvering 
until he spotted the suspect who was raising his weapon to fire again. Detective Sikanik shot the suspect, causing him to drop his weapon and fall to the floor. The two officers handcuffed the gunman and double murder suspect who had been struck by rounds from both officers. Their quick and brave actions ended the tremendous danger to hundreds of guests in a crowded hotel.